so close, yet so far, my M2 Max MacBook Pro just got 68 milliseconds for the regular expression compile test as part of the Pi Performance Suite. The number to beat today is going to be this upcoming Intel Core i9 14th generation, which got 65 milliseconds. And I'm going to use the M3 MacBook, M3 Pro, and M3 Max. Which one is going to do it? And this time I've notched it up a bit. I've got a few more Python tests. Let's do it. I'm going to kick things off with Pi Performance. It's like a fitness test for Python on your machine, giving you a friendly heads up on how fast and efficient Python runs. Pi Performance comes with a whole lot of tests, so I pick four of them that I think are going to be the most important. First, let's see how these tests do on bare machine with nothing else running, and then I'm going to come back and do it again for a real world test with other stuff running, because that's how we work, right? We have things running on our machines. We don't just do one. Right, you know what I mean. I'm also starting this test fresh on all these machines, so they all have 100% of battery. We'll see after the test is done how much they have left. The first test is Python startup. It times how quickly Python wakes up and gets ready to run a simple script. Let's go. By the way, I'm on Python 3.11 right here, and I'm using Conda to organize my Python environments. If you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link to a video down below where I show you how to set that up. Surprisingly, the M3 wins this one, 5.82 milliseconds, 6.14 milliseconds for the M3 Pro, and 6.1 milliseconds for the M3 Max. The next test is regular expression compilation, and let's go. This measures the performance of regular expression compilation and execution. It's pretty common to do this in text processing applications, so I thought it was an important test to include. And the results for the regular expression compilation test are actually pretty good. So if you remember in the beginning of this video, the newest Intel Core i9 14th generation had 65 milliseconds for this test. And guess what? All three of these machines beat that, which means they beat the previous M2 Max. 58.3 milliseconds on the M3, 59.7 for the M3 Pro, a little slower than the M3, and 57.3 on the M3 Max. They're all very close to each other, but they all edge out that Intel Core i9. Moving on to the next test, it's called JSON Dumps, and despite the funny name, this test is pretty important because it shows you how the Python's library is used, particularly the speed at which Python can output or serialize JSON data, which is kind of important. And again, again, the M3, the base model, is showing that it's faster. Look at this. We only have eight cores there, it took 5.75 milliseconds, but it took 5.79 on the M3 Pro. So the M3 Max was the fastest. I'm just surprised that the M3 is doing these tests faster than the M3 Pro. And these numbers are really close together, but the M3 Max takes it. The next test is logging. This is using Python's logging module and testing its performance, pretty widely used in various applications for error tracking and information reporting. We're talking about microseconds here, so it's just really, really small differences here. Now, for all you machine learning and data science folks, this next test uses NumPy for a matrix multiplication operation. This is actually in my own GitHub. I'm gonna link it down below if you're curious to check it out. And let's go. I don't have any fancy output on this one. It's just gonna report the results when it's done. And we have a finisher, 13.01 seconds over here. Wow, that was really fast. M3 Pro is really heating up here to 107 degrees. This one took 26.2 seconds and the M3 is still running. Wow, up to 108 degrees and it's still running. It's really heating up over here and it's done. 86.6 seconds over there. Wow. Now I'm going to run this one more time. There is actually no GPU being used. For that, I'm going to have some separate tests, so subscribe if you're not already. And by the way, like this video if you found it helpful so far. If we take a look at Activity Monitor here, this is not a GPU-bound operation, but you can see that it's considerably CPU-bound, and we're using all the cores. That would explain the results. This is a multi-core operation, really filling up those cores. You can see the CPU chart right there. And guess what? Whoever has the most cores is going to win this one. So I have the 11 core M1 Pro here. If I had the 12 core M1 Pro, not the bin variety, but the regular variety, then that one would beat this M3 Pro. This test scales pretty well, and you can definitely tell that. You might be familiar with the Mandelbrot test. It's a scorcher. It uses all the CPU cores, so we might get some heat from all three of these machines. This is from Benchmark's game. I'll link to this down below, and we select Python. There's different algorithms you can select here. We're going to go with Mandelbrot here. It gives you the source code so you can do this yourself even. And who's going to help us out here? The Schwarzenegger 2.0. This basically presses the enter button on all machines at the same time. And uh, let's go. It's a race. Wow. Instantly, we got a spike up to 102 degrees over here on the M3 Pro. Wow. It 
finished it kind of fast. I might have to redo it. Still working on these two machines, but 180 degrees here and 180 degrees here. So we're really pushing the limits here. And holy cow, I've never seen it finish this test so fast. We've got the fans kicking up on these two machines. Let's have a look at the fan RPM. 2600 on the M3 Pro, zero on the M3 Max, by the way, and it stayed zero. And this is a multi-core test, so you can kind of guess what's happened, but I've never seen speeds this fast. 15.4 seconds on the M3 Max, 27.8 seconds on the M3 Pro, faster than on the Intel box, faster than on the M1 Max, and finally 36.2 seconds on the M3, which is actually still pretty good. I'm gonna increase this parameter to 25,000 so it runs a little bit longer so we can have a little look under the hood there. And let's do it, boom. Now right away I wanna show you what happens here. Here's the M3 Pro, look at those temperatures and the fan speed going up. Here's the M3 Max. We do have uh, the fans going this time around and the temp is pretty high going into 102. 107 over here, 103 over here. On the M3 base model, 4,000 RPM for the fans. Wow. M3 Max is done already, by the way. And if we take a look at the CPU, you can kind of see what's happening there. Basically that big giant spike. Yep, that's our test. And it kind of sounds like there's an Intel machine in the house, but there isn't. These fans go up really, really high if they're needed. And I did not use TG Pro, which is the software I use to see the fans and control the fans and look at the temperatures. Link down below, by the way. I did not use this to manually set the fans to this speed. It automatically did it when it detected that the temperatures were so high. If this was an M2 MacBook Air without fans, we'd be in a little bit of trouble right now. And I have a few tests showing that. I'll link to those down below. One minute, 29 seconds for the M3. One minute, nine seconds for the M3 Pro. And 39 seconds on the M3 Max. So we have a huge boost here for the M3 Max and a pretty good boost throughout. Those extra cores really help in this multi-core operation. And as far as battery, the M3 Max and the M3 Pro have about the same battery left. Well, actually the same, 84%. But the M3 base model is down to 68%. And these two bigger machines have two fans each, while the base model M3 only has one fan. Because it only has one fan, that fan probably has to work harder. And that's why we saw it spinning up more to a higher RPM. And if that's the case, maybe that drains the battery faster. So keep an eye out for that if you have these kinds of resource intensive builds. All right, let's move on to a more realistic example where we don't have just a bench mark running as developers, right? We have lots of software running on our machines. So I've opened up a couple of instances of Safari. I have 15 Google Chrome tabs open. I know that some of you will have 100 tabs open. So I only have 15, big deal. I think that's something to aspire to, less tabs. I got the terminal open, I got Xcode, a couple of instances of Visual Studio Code, and I have Docker running. I'm gonna use this project from Dave Plummer, Dave's Garage, a link to his repository down below as well. This program calculates prime numbers. We're gonna do just the Python version of it. And it's prime numbers from two to a million. We'll see which one of these machines does more iterations of that calculation in five seconds. All right, here we go. I'm timing it and let's go. Now, all these solutions were single threaded. The expectation here is that all these machines will do the same, right? Because they all have that M3 core. The one single core should be consistent between all these. If you look at the first solution, 112.9 passes per second on the M3, 119.7 on the M3 Pro and 120. These numbers might seem different, but they're actually very, very close together. We have 1473 on the M3, 1416 on the M3 Pro, and 1449 on the M3 Max. I also reran all the Pi performance tests that I did before under load this time. And while the M3 Pro and the M3 Max didn't show much sign of slowing down executing these tests, the M3 base model actually did. Even though those tests were single core tests where we're expecting the one core to do as well across all the machines, here under load is where it makes real difference. And I'll remind you that the base model only only has eight gigabytes of RAM on board. So yes, while the machine remains quite usable and doesn't crash with only eight gigabytes of RAM, I've talked about this before and RAM management on Mac OS is really good, but there does seem to be an overall performance degradation here, even though the tests are mainly CPU bound. Overall, the M3 MacBook Pro with its longer startup times and regex compilations while it's under load is best suited for beginners or those working on lighter tasks. The M3 Pro showing more consistent performance
performance across conditions is ideal for intermediate developers handling a wider range of tasks, including mid-sized data processing and web development. I'll do more specific web developer tests a little bit later. Now, the M3 Max, with its superior handling of load conditions and not load conditions and minimal performance variations that we've seen, is the best choice for advanced Python developers that are going to be doing more resource-intensive projects like large-scale data analytics and machine learning. This should give you a little bit of a better idea of how these machines will perform with Python. If you want my general recommendations for software developers overall, then watch this video next right over here, and I will see you in the next one.